Once upon a time, there was a poet whose voice was so beautiful that all the animals of the forest and even the rocks and the trees would gather around to hear him sing. His name was Orpheus, and together with his beloved wife, Eurydice, they were the happiest couple in the world. Until one fateful day, when Eurydice was bitten and killed by a poisonous snake. And Orpheus knew immediately that he would not be able to live his life without her. So he decided to go into the underworld to get her back. And after a long and arduous journey, indeed, he found himself in the palace of Hades, god of death. And he begged the god to bring Eurydice back to life, but of course, Hades could not be moved. So he tried to convince him the only way he knew how, by singing the song of his love for Eurydice. And something incredible happened, something that had never happened before. A single tear rolled over Hades' cheek, and the god spoke. Very well, Orpheus. I can see that your love for Eurydice is true. You shall have her back, but on one condition. You must walk all the way back to the world of the living. While Eurydice walks behind you, but without ever looking back. Don't look back. And Orpheus agreed, and so he went, past the hellhound Cerberus, over the river Styx, and up the arduous path towards the light. But as he went, never even once did he hear a single word of his beloved Eurydice, a single footstep, a single breath. And so he started questioning, is she still following me? Has Hades kept his promise? Does she love me enough to return with me from the dead to the world of the living. Anxiety started building up inside him. He had to know. And he looked back, only to see his beloved Eurydice fall into the abyss, this time for good. Orpheus' true love conquered even death, but his true love in turn was conquered by distrust. I want you to think for a minute about when people used to tell you stories like this. Aren't those some of your fondest memories? I sure do remember when my grandfather used to tell me the story of Orpheus. I remember when he told it to me for the first time, I must have been six years old maybe, and he's sitting in his big golden brown armchair in the corner of his living room, and I'm sitting on his lap. Back then, I didn't really realize that the story of Orpheus is essentially about trust. Back then, I just remember my grandfather giving me a rather cryptic piece of advice. He told me, Nick, if you don't remember anything about the story of Orpheus, remember this, don't Look back. Why do we love stories so much? I think a part of the answer to that question is actually the advice my grandfather gave me. When we listen to stories, we don't look back. And here's what I mean by that. A storyteller is essentially a liar. He creates a fictional reality with its own set of rules in which anything can be possible. Gods may exist, or magical singers, or hellhounds. And even though we know that this world is a lie, a fiction, it's made up, we choose to believe the, uh, the storyteller to go along with the story. We trust the storyteller. And that phenomenon where we trust the storyteller, even though we know he's making everything up, that phenomenon is called the willing suspension of disbelief. Now, this willing suspension of disbelief is extremely important. It's what enables us to enjoy stories at all. All of you here in the Vereniging today, and all of you watching this over the live stream, and I myself, when I was sitting on my grandfather's lap, 
we were only able to enjoy the story of Orpheus at all because we suspended our disbelief. Because we didn't think mm, a man loses his wife, goes into the underworld and convinces the god of death to bring her back to life? Maybe not. The suspension of disbelief, that's what is, what's important. It's for that suspension of disbelief that I today, 16 years later, am s still able to find beauty and insight and inspiration in the story of Orpheus, and indeed, truth. It's because I suspend my disbelief when listening to stories. It's because when I listen to stories, I don't look back. Now, a final case in point. I walked here, out here on this TEDx stage today, and you don't know me. And I told you an anecdote about my grandfather telling me stories. Now, you don't know whether I'm telling the truth because you don't know me. For all you know, my grandfather barely finished his primary education, worked in a factory for all of his life, and has just heard the story of Orpheus for the very first time as he's watching this TED Talk over the live stream. Hi, Grandpa. <laughs> for all you know, my grandfather suffered a stroke when I was six years old and hasn't been able to speak, let alone tell stories for as long as I can remember. For all you know, I made the entire story about my grandfather up. Yet all of you, consciously or unconsciously, chose to believe my story, to trust that I was telling you the truth. And if you found any beauty or charm or insight or inspiration in my story today, then it will be because you've done exactly that. So, if you leave here today, you go out, you talk to your neighbor, and you exchange stories, as I hope you will, as is, in fact, the goal of any TEDx conference, even though you don't, might, might not know each other, suspend your disbelief. And if you don't remember anything about my story here today, remember this. Don't look back. Thank you.